Imagine that if you are the first person to invent a car or a simple paper clip, what kind of material you would choose to produce them? When a wine glass or coffee mug slips from your hand, what are you most afraid of? When you are enjoying a wafer bar, do you expect it to be crunchy or chewy? Materials are used in different industries and fields because of their own nature and properties. It's very important for engineers to understand how materials behave under loads for design and analysis of a structure. For a car crash example, distortion grows in the materials till the entire front part of the car is compressed to a minimum. The strength of the material is not lost suddenly, but gradually. We call such material ductile material. Most metal materials have such behavior under loads. On the other side, for the wine glass, it broke to numerous small pieces without much distortion within the material. We call material with such behavior brittle materials. As we mentioned before, most of metal materials falls into the category of ductile materials instead of brittle material. For the car crash example, aluminum is a common material for car frame. Other metals such as steel, copper, and various alloys are all ductile materials. For brittle material in our life, we can find glass, ceramic, etc. Anything that you're afraid it might slip from your hand and falls to the ground are mostly brittle. Metal is widely used in our life and technology. It witnesses the human civilization from ancient time to modern days. Nowadays, we can find metal in almost all industries, and people are still exploring for lighter weight and higher strength metals, or metals with special capabilities. Why is metal widely used in the mechanical world? It is preferred because of its high strength, ductility, and wieldability. Besides, metal is almost homogeneous and isotropic. This makes metal a reliable material in many different fields. All metal materials share very similar pattern of behavior under loads. Let's have a look at a typical 1D stress-strain curve of metal. Initially, the relationship between stress and strain is linear, which can be described by Hooke's law using Young's modulus. After reaching a certain point, such linear relationship does not exist anymore. We're looking at a curve with changing tangent. And for metal materials, the stiffness always decreases compared to initial linear stiffness, meaning that the strength of the material is decreased. In another word, under the same amount of load increments, the material will deform much more. Such behavior is called plasticity. Why does plastic deformation happen for materials? It results from slip between planes of atoms due to shear stresses. This dislocation motion is essentially atoms in the crystal structure rearranging themselves to have new neighbors. But we're not going to focus at the atom level of the material. We're more interested in the macro behavior of plasticity. One important feature of plastic behavior is unrecoverable, which means if we load a material to the plastic range and unload it to zero, you will find that the material will not be able to return to the initial configuration. Let's have a look at this simple cube made of plastic material under cyclic loading. The deformation versus load curve is plotted here. We can find corresponding configuration of the body for the red dots at the deformation versus load curve. And you can see that when the load comes back to zero, there's amount of deformation that remains in the body. And this is the plastic deformation.